Happy Sunday, Mount Hermon Awana. Hope y'all are having a great day. I know today is Palm Sunday, and this is my first virtual Awana large group time. I appreciate you taking a few minutes to watch this. And this is the first one I've done. I've done them for work, but this is the first one that I've done for you guys. And um, <clears throat> So I've got my notes here. So I want to get started. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but wanted to welcome welcome you. Notice the Awana background. Got on my shirt. So I've tried to get myself prepared to do this lesson for you as if I were there. I sure miss seeing you guys. I miss your faces. I miss seeing your families. And I just pray that everybody's being safe and practicing social distances. So if I look around a little bit, it's because I'm going back and forth over my notes. But you know, today is Palm Sunday. That is when Jesus was his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. And uh, this week would be the Last Supper, Jesus' trial and crucifixion, and death and burial. Um, and then, of course, next Sunday being Easter, we celebrate Jesus' victory over death by resurrecting and rising from the dead after three days. I also want to mention that uh, Pastor Cody, who did the lesson last week, was actually married yesterday. So we want to give congratulations to he and Casey, and we will continue to pray for their marriage and look forward to her moving up to Danville and being a part of Mount Hermon as well. Uh, so let's, uh, let's just open with a brief word of prayer and what is always my word. If you're wearing a hat during this, just take your hat off, bow your head, and our word is reverent. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for the beautiful sunshine. We thank you for the gift of Jesus in our lives. But we just pray for Pastor Cody and Casey. Uh, we just ask that you bless that marriage. Uh, Lord, we just ask that you bless this time of fellowship and this lesson. I pray for the words to uh, do, do it justice. And Lord, we just thank you for all those families who will listen in. Just be with us today and this week and let others see Christ in us. Christ's name, amen. So I wanted to make sure that we actually give a birthday shout out to some of our clubbers. You know, I always do birthdays in the Family Life Center and, and Miss Catherine does it in Cubby. So let me read them off and we're going to go back to March 15th because I don't want to miss anybody from that time. Uh, David Stair in Cubby's just turned four. Addie Thompson just turned four yesterday. Rebecca Daniel will be five in Cubbies. Baylor Martin uh, just turned eight. She was on back in March. I want to say hello to Baylor. Jamari Waller just turned seven back in March. Uh, Chance Flincham is uh, tomorrow will be his birthday. He'll be eight. Kinsley Stone uh, will be seven on Wednesday. Kenley Holly just turned nine last month. Leah Yates will be 10 on Tuesday. Colin Toller just turned 11 on the 18th of last month. And Braden Witt turned 11. So wanted to say happy birthday. I'm not going to put you all through any type of uh, me singing, but wanted to wish everyone a happy birthday. Um, last week, uh, Pastor Cody talked about patience and peace. He shared a, a, a Bible example of that. Uh, so today, this week's lesson is going to be on section 4.4, kindness and goodness. Wow. Patience and peace last week, kindness and goodness this week kind of go hand in hand. So we're going to talk about our verse, memory verse of this week is going to be Ephesians 2.10. <clears throat> for we who are, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. For we are his workmanship. We created in the image of God. Uh, and, and through Christ Jesus, and we're intended to do good works. So, you know, when we start to talk, I didn't want to get into, uh, you know, a lot of, of, of the structured stuff that we sometimes have in large group, but just wanted to, to talk with you. And, you know, in the last few weeks, we're having a lot of home closeness, especially if you're with extended family, if you have siblings, um, you know, stay with having to stay with grandparents or things like that. So, it's been real tough to be kind and good. Um, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm not, uh, this is not giving a lesson to you. I'm included in this lesson. But last week as Cody discussed, being patient is tough, you know, more often than, than not. And 
you know, with us having to shelter inside, you know, and we still have more weeks of this, so it's going to continue to be tough. And it does get tougher every week. But, you know, let's think about it. Even with this before COVID-19, why is it difficult to be kind or good? Well, simply, it's quite often that we won't, don't want to put others' needs or wants before our own. You know, Pastor Steve has preached on many occasions and, and brought this up in conversation, and, and I completely agree that we tend to live in the kingdom of self, meaning we, everything revolves around us and what we want, what we like, what we don't want, what we want to do, what we want to eat. And we as humans, sometimes as human nature, that we want to put ourselves before anyone else. But I really want to share a couple examples in the Bible where we're going to talk about Jesus just, you know, showing kindness and goodness during his biblical times. The first example I want to discuss with you is, is during the Last Supper, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. You know, as Pastor Corey would say, disciples. You know, it, it's, it's, it's not disciples in the Bible, it's disciples. So a little funny at Pastor Corey. But remember a few weeks ago during a large group lesson, I asked in the large group, would anybody in there be willing to wash my feet? I was quite surprised that a few of you, not, not many, but a few of you said that you would be willing. Others said, you know, ooh, that's gross. Uh, so we had all types of answers. But, but, you know, Jesus showed such an act of kindness, just knowing that he was getting ready to, to be tried, crucified, and buried. And he was washing his disciples' feet because he was talking with them about how putting others' needs that they're going to need uh, guidance, uh, people they're going to come in contact as they share the gospel and they start spreading uh, when Jesus is going to be gone. But it also showed ultimately that Jesus came to this earth to serve and not be served. And this gives us a great example or, of how we're to serve others and actually do it willingly and with a happy heart. Another example is when Jesus uh, was uh, with the Samaritan woman at the well. And this is one of my favorite passages in the entire Bible. And you can have an adult read with you, you know, and read this story. It's found in John chapter 4. I uh, won't go into all the, the details of the story, but why I point this out as one of my favorites is that Jesus really went out of his way to meet with this woman. Never told us her name. It wasn't important. But no one was nice to this lady. No one in town. She was going out to draw water at the hottest part of the day. It was noon. And she went out. She was by herself because she really didn't have any friends. She had done things that weren't really good. But Jesus loved her and made a special point, and it's recorded in the Bible, that he wanted and needed to go meet with this woman and share the story. And share about faith, and share about salvation. So you ask, you know, Commander Jason, I understand this. There's two great stories that actually happened in the Bible. Um, so what does that have to do with me, <clears throat> me today? And, you know, I'm glad you asked that question. But so here's what I want to say. Sharon, Miss Sharon and I always like to tell Katie and Leah, that it costs you nothing to be kind to people. It cost you nothing to say hello to someone, open a door for someone, using your manners, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. Because you never know what someone is going through, where they are, or what may have just happened in their life. And your act of kindness could change every, everyone's, that person's attitude right there. So it costs you literally nothing to be nice and kind. And what you will see is being kind makes you put others' needs before your own. Now, being kind starts out being intentional, meaning that you have to put forth effort to do so. But did you know that being kind, the, the, the kindness was actually referenced more than 300 times in the Bible? 
So I would tend to say that being kind is pretty important. And when you do, when you're talking about this, now, what can you do this week for acts of kindness? I know that siblings might be getting on your nerves or this closeness. You can't go out very far. You have to stay in place inside. You know, clubbers, I, I get it. But we also have to remember that there could be other people living in your house that feel the same way. So a couple examples of what, what you could do this week, and I'm not going to go in a detailed list. And of course we have cubbies, which thank you parents, if you have a cubby in, in joining in, I appreciate that. So even, even with our cubbies, you know, with, with teachers, if they're in an early learning center, they can color their teachers that they're now not gonna see for the rest of this school year, color them a picture letting them know that they appreciate or miss them. Uh, kids that are in our, our, our Sparks or our, our TNT, write a teacher or write your teachers a nice letter, handwritten, just saying how much you miss them or, and how you appreciate what they've done for you to help you grow in your education. Maybe even an Awana leader. So call a loved one. Just pick up the phone and call someone, tell them you miss seeing them and that, that remind them that Jesus loves them and just have a conversation. You know what, even at home with parents or siblings, I'd ask a parent for chores that they would like for you to do. You know, acts of kindness, you know, you, you are actually blessed from, from the acts of kindness. I don't mean getting money. I don't mean that you're going to get a pat on the back, but you know, there's a, there, it's something inside when you do acts of kindness, how you feel rewarded. And ultimately, when you do acts of kindness, that is pleasing to God because he wants to know you and God loves you and wants to be the ruler and priority in your life. And we can do that with a relationship and through a relationship with Jesus Christ when we ask him in our hearts to be our Lord and Savior. You know, we, we want to do good things. We want to put our friends and our families and our, our neighbors before us. And when you do that, I'm very proud of you. And you know what? Your teachers are, your WANA leaders are, and your family members are. So this week, I would like for you to pray specifically for God to help you with being kind and, you know, being kind to others and to do good works that would be pleasing to him. I want you to pray about that and try real hard to do that this week. Now, I'm also sending your, your, an adult in your family uh, some sword drills for this week. There'll be seven sword drills that deal with kindness and good works uh, this week. So, lovers, again, I want to thank you for joining in, and I'll be doing more of these. I miss you so much, and I just pray specifically for each and every one of you and your families that you stay safe. If you have a member of your family, that has uh, COVID-19. We pray for them as well. Thank you again for, for joining in, and I hope you have a great week. Do your schoolwork. Do your sword drills. Hey, maybe you can even do sword drills with your parents and test them to see how they can do it. Any way you want to do it, I just greatly appreciate it. Love you, and have a great week.